Alexander Saar is the next biggest NBA prospect, and he's French. But right now he plays in Australia, and he's one of the best big men in the NBL. This draft class is kind of thin, but is Saar the best player to enter the NBA this summer? Let's go. Sorry if it's like dark. There's like snow outside and the light, like watch this. It's gonna like, uh, so I'd rather not. But Alexander Saar, he, I mean, I love my French boys. J'ai une maison française. Donc, uh, j'avais des Paris. Ça, c'est pourquoi j'aime les maisons français. Pas comme ça, pas comme ça. Mais j'aime les femmes aussi. He's, he's super long. 7 foot 1, 220 pounds. He doesn't show up a lot of the stat sheet. He only averages 10 points, 4 rebounds, 1 assist, and 1 block a game. So it's not like amazing based off of like other guards that have gone first in the, in the past. I mean, I, I've looked at guys like Yandra Aiden. He averaged like 22, 11, and like 2 blocks. I'm like, okay, that's... That's pretty good. But now he didn't really pan out like we thought he would, right? We thought he was gonna be like Embiid or something like that, but he's not. So it's kind of interesting how well, we don't really have a gauge, which is you just gotta get the league and then you gotta play well, right? He plays really guard-like, but like off ball guard-like. He's always kind of ready on the wing or like he's inside and then someone drives in. He's really good at spacing out, getting out, catch and shoot, and he'll just fling, right? He, he can shoot. He's got a smooth jumper and he floats around the rim on offense without clogging it up. He's very spatially aware on offense, which is something that's really impressive for a young guy. Like I said, his stats, he's averages 10 points, four rebounds, one assist, one block per game. Not the greatest, but I mean, he, he averages 10 points per game on five shots per game. That's really, really good. So some of those are three pointers, so it's not like insanely high, like, oh, 100%, you know, every bucket's going in. But 10 points on five shots a game, that's pretty good for five shots a game, right? I think it's just because he's a super young guy playing professionally right now, and they're just maybe not giving him the ball, maybe not the focal point of the offense, right? There's a lot of things going on there. His player comp, I see a lot of MPJ, honestly, Michael Porter Jr., but if MPJ was focused on playing the four or the five, like he technically should be for his height, I mean, that he shouldn't have to do anything. Obviously, that comparison is closer to Wemby or Chet, who I think he actually plays a lot like, but I didn't wanna like oversaturate the talk of Wemby and Chet. You kind of see what I'm saying. And this guy is more athletic and has more of an offensive mindset when it comes to the game than when being Chet. He's a 7-1 stretch forward who can be 100%, strong 100%, the main defensive anchor on the team. He, he can stand in the back line and he's he's kind of like AD. And I mean, I mean Wemby can be too. Chet can be too. But what separates him with those guys, I mean, they can be defensive anchors, but he's a very tenacious defender. He's a very solid high energy chase down i'm gonna guard all five positions he's a very solid defender i think he's a lot better than a couple of bigs in the league right now i mean ayton bagley capella any one of the centers from the bottom 10 teams in the nba right now like i said he's a very tenacious defender and i i seriously think he could guard every single position kind of like victor victor has shown that he can he's just so long to the point where he'll just someone will go by and he'll just like right here steal ball go up right Offensively, I think he runs the floor a lot like Chet, and he uses his length to survey missed shots very often on offense. Something that both Victor and Chet do, and I mean, a lot of other bigs do this too, but I think he does that better than both of them. I, I think Wendy was a little bit too much on the, on the, around the arc. Alexander's like always just around, just lurking almost, and he just goes up and like it's crazy it's it's really impressive so for the team that's supposed to draft him i think sar has moved a lot in the rankings this draft class specifically has moved around a lot and he shows up on number one on a lot of the rankings and it's as it stands right now before the lottery the pistons have the number one pick the wizards supposed to get the number two and the spurs could have number three so depending on how the lottery plays out we could see him either playing with wemby or we could see him getting banished to a terrible franchise that will never use him <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah that's kind of kind of tough so very raw shows me how thin this draft class is because he's not like woo, like oh wow he's amazing like he's playing well i mean he's playing professionally so he's good but we have to see how the rest of the season plays out in the nbl if he, he was only averaging 10 points of 40 bounds like in any if you throw him in the last draft class he might not even go first round like honestly that's in terms of like the bigs are going on yeah, so with not like a clear guy in this draft class, teams are going to draft off what they want instead of pure talent. It's it kind of like the 2019 draft where there's like there's Zion and there's Ja, and that's like the clear one too. That's already way more like superstar talent than we have in this draft class, 2024. Outside of Zion and Ja in that draft class, it was kind of like you saw just, okay, DeAndre Hunter's going top five. Darius Garland, I mean, he's good now, but he sucked 
really hard <laughs> going like in the first couple years of his career. Jackson Hayes went top 10 and just like, those are good players, but it just was super thin after Zion, Zion? After Zion and Ja. And so you just kind of had to pick and a lot of people went in places maybe they shouldn't have gone now that we look back in ret retrospect. So I think that's how this entire draft class is gonna, is gonna go out. This was the first day of the whole NBA draft prospects week. We got a video tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. I'm very excited. I've got, I'll, I'll just say it right now. We got Isaiah Collier, Collier, I guess it's Collier. Ja Zachary Richache, Zachary Richache. I think I could just say that. Um, I wanna say Collier, cause that's how, Collier, that's how it, like French, but he's, he, Collier, Isaiah Collier, okay. Um, Rob Dillingham and my, one of my buddies from high school, Deron Holmes, who's leading Dayton, the highest seed in the A-10 conference, and Dayton's currently ranked top 15 in the country. I think they're like 16 and two right now. They're playing super well. I wanna do a video on him. So those, those that's the lineup for this week. So get ready to check it out. Um, if you see this video not on Monday, the day that it was posted, another video is gonna be posted. So go go check out the rest of the channel. I've already got a lot of videos on past draft, draft prospects, future prospects, like a Cooper Flag video. I, I, I like this. We've got some some fun stuff going for the next couple of years. Uh, this year, eh, not so much, but <laughs> just not in terms of superstar top, but I'm very excited. So the last video I made was, I traded Steph Curry every single team. You can check the video out right here. I had a fun time with it. I did like every single team. I went to the draft trade simulator, the trade, no. I went to the trade simulator on ESPN.com and put Steph Curry in every single team. And that was a doozy, bro. So go check that out. That was that was hilarious. But yeah, get ready for this week, subscribe. Uh, go check that video out and go check the rest of the videos out if they're already out. So yeah, that's all I got for y'all today. Got a special guest. Hello. <laughs> I, I, go, go. Okay. Well, um, I just wanted to say we created a website for the warm up. It's called the warm up period. Um, and there's a couple blog posts kind of telling how the warm up was created by Jake and some other fun things. You can get to our Instagram from there, Twitter, YouTube. It's a fun website, pretty interactive. Anyways, go check it out. Description so you can check it out. Um, check out our first blog post, um, comment, get involved in the discussion. I wrote it. I love feedback. Um, but yeah. I'll run off. Sweet. Let's go. Dab me up. Oh, dab me up. <laughs>